Okay, I'm recording now my screen only. Um, okay, uh, sort of general thing on sort of romantic partners and losing desire, sexual desire, uh, losing sexual desire for a romantic partner and just my views, uh, general ideas around it. I think if you've got a, potentially if you've got a great partner who has been uh, sort of a good catch, shall we say, um, I wouldn't definitely leave in a hurry if one loses desire temporarily. If, of course, I'm, one of the things that can happen is while, while you're a spiritual student is that you can go into sublime states where there, are no, where there is no desire because you're elevated at a higher level of consciousness temporarily. And it feels like you don't need anything. You probably just sit out in your chair at home and just piss out for the whole day. Uh, but then it's not, you don't stay at that level of consciousness like you might get your ego back. You might go into thinking, into fear, into negative emotions. And the ego may have unresolved repressed feelings and belief systems and thoughts still within it. So if that's the case, um, definitely I would continue to, um, you know, you're not, you're not finished with enlightenment uh, and you're not going to be staying in that field. And um, so it might be that um, it's almost like when you're at a, what a very high level of consciousness, you may feel one way. And when your ego reattaches, you may feel it totally different. So I wouldn't necessarily, just because you're in um, high levels of, say, bliss or whatever, uh, necessarily let everything go. Um, because uh, that may not be appropriate because there's still more work to be done. Uh, with uh, letting go of romantic partners, especially if they've been good ones. I mean, if they've been bad ones, uh, that's different. But I wouldn't, you know, apart from, yes, I mean, explaining. I mean, like, let's say I lost sexual desire for my partner. I'd probably explain it to them and just share that that's not, you know, that there is no um, want to do the um, uh, sexual intimacy. But... Um, but you know, if they can bear with you, you'll get you'll gain clarity, or it may be that you're able to talk and communicate and find a way through it, so that your partner understands. You know, and if your partner loves you, I mean, love. I mean, there is a there is an idea that men want sex all the time. I mean, that might not be true, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's not. I mean, love is something totally different to the to the wanting sex with a woman. I would say for in, as a generality. So if you really love a woman uh, and uh, you're not getting sex, I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that wouldn't be a, a, an issue. Uh, in fact, men do go through that, you know, impotence and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure they'd still want their partner to, to love them and not run away just because they're not getting sex. So it's not a, it's not a thing. It's more of a, an ego energy that the need or the craving for sex so if your partner really loves you, I mean, it may not be, I mean, he may be happy to, to wait for a period or just him out of love, that's not an issue. You know, he just wants, you know, usually what partners want if they're committed romantically to you is, um, uh, what is it, fidelity, you know, that you stay true to them and you're not, you know, um, you're not then having another romantic partner or three other romantic partners at the same time is, the, is more the thing. Otherwise, they, you know, they, they do, um, unless that's agreed uh, that you would, but generally, spiritually speaking, if a man and woman, they usually sort of uh, are monogam monogamous, um, even if they, they're not having sex. Anyway, that's my view. Also, the karma. I mean, I do agree with Buddha and Krishna um, that sometimes there are past lives with, uh, with a person. So uh, hurting their feelings or damaging them when everything's not fulfilled um, I wouldn't necessarily do. I, the idea that, well, I don't want to have sex with them, so I'm just going to cut them straight away and let them go free. Well, it might be more complicated from their point of view, or they may, um, so um, I would definitely stick around, speak, go to spiritual groups, have a spirit talk with them, um, have, have chats with people, uh, just to get um, a sane thing, because um, yeah, I think that the sexual thing is not a big issue if the man has a lot of love for you, for, for you. Or there may be deeper things, you know, deeper attachments that need time to be worked rather than quickly ended. So um, I really like prayers like a surrender to your God, my karmas and karmic setups with my partner or 
I surrendered to God my attachment to my partner. I surrendered to God my fear of my partner being rejected uh, by uh, my lack of desire. And, and I pray for uh, forgiveness, transcendence, miracles, or I pray for a miracle to see my partner differently. Um, God is a love in which I forgive myself for not having uh, uh, sexual desire, or God is a love in which I forgive my partner if he rejects me if, uh, for not having it. Um, so all of those things, um, or praying for just for a shift in perception or um, to see peace in the situation. So um, if, for example, if I go, went into or a spiritual seeker went to a high spiritual state and there was no sexual desire, which is actually quite possible, um, uh, quite often um, you've got to understand that the you know what is what is sex? I mean, I mean, people usually um, or men may want sex for the the hit, the high, the five the five seconds of like happiness or whatever orgasm. So, but you know, if you're in a state of bliss, you don't need that. You don't need that drug fix from sex. But um, but actually, love is higher. Love is actually higher. So you, your partner may be getting if you're going into blissful states. He may even be more happy than being in states of lower things. So you, you just don't know, and you just don't know what is in the interest of the highest good for you and your partner. So sometimes um, you can also use the Course in Miracles. Sometimes, of course, yes, I forgot this. If you're going doing more the inner work of the observer and uh, or letting go of the feelings, uh, like Dr. Hawkins' um, letting go process, then um, you may start to get in what I call, it's not really dualistic, but you feel very happy without people. But you can do the Course of Miracles lesson, like God is the love in which, uh, what was it? God, I see, I see God in, in my partner. I see God in the ch chair and the table, but also, or I see Christ in my partner. I mean, just connecting to loving, not with attachment or cravingness or ego uh, stuff onto your partner, but just uh, seeing the divinity and then getting uh, and allowing the Holy Spirit to direct you in um, you know, evolving the relationship together because that might be in the interest of the highest good for both. And that's just what I, uh, some of my thoughts, if you've got a, a really nice partner and you're thinking of, you've got no, but you, you never know. I mean, with high spiritual states, if you lose your desire, sexual desire, you may, your ego may come back in two months time. So, you know, just cutting a person, I mean, I definitely explain not be dishonest with them that you're just going through a transitory phase, which may last or may not last and leave it up to them. But, uh, but, um, or at least explaining or communicating, I would definitely consider uh, some of those options. I'm going to press stop.